Hi guys, welcome back to My Steps to Sobriety, my show on YouTube and as a podcast with me, your host, Stefan Neff. Today, yes, you guessed it. It's another fantastic day for an interview. And I've got back Shannon Lee. Shannon, we did the part one and I introduced you to Shannon as a uh, previous uh, armed forces member. She was in the Navy in the United States. And indeed, uh, following uh, her four years uh, in the Navy, towards the end of it already started deteriorating in her health and things did not go so well for Shannon. And uh, that was the, the, the background story that I introduced you uh, last time we spoke. Now, today, we really want to talk upon or talk about the magic that happened in her transformation, in her recovery, in her change towards a different woman. And as with so many transformations, they can all come in in various uh, forms, ways. Sometimes they come in disguises. Sometimes they, they are there hitting you like a two by four into the face. And it is what it is. Uh, so today, I'm so pleased to have Shannon back. And welcome to you. Thank you so much, Stefan. Thank you. It's great to see you. <sighs> You were, from the sequence of your story, you were not in such a great place. Uh, here you were a young go-getter uh, who joined the Navy to leave the small town USA. And you had your adventures. You lived on naval bases uh, in the South. Suddenly there was sunshine strange glowy thing <laughs> up there um so yes it's just, people in the uk can relate to that sort of for about once a year for about 12 minutes there is wow. something <laughs> i'm kidding i'm kidding i'm kidding half because i lived in the uk right, right, so yeah. there is seasonal affective disorder is very much an issue yeah. um, so, and there's uh, a reason they call it new england right uh, oh ouch Ouch, I didn't even go there. <laughs> yeah, well, it's true. You know. True, true, true. So, but here you were actually, supposedly, living your dream. You wanted to get out there. You wanted to have the adventure. You were playing uh, in the sun. What happened? What? Just remind us, why were things not right? How were they not right? Uh, yeah, well, so I was in my mid uh, to late 20s, um, after, you know, once I got out of the military, once I got out of the Navy. And so uh, just having been in during that time, um, you know, there's certain things, uh, certain inoculations that we got. And I didn't really correlate the two, but it took about, you know, three, <clears throat> excuse me, to four years to start feeling very down, um, just really tired all the time. You could sleep 14 hours a day and still be exhausted. Um, and yet you, you know, I wasn't married, didn't have a family, fortunately at the time, because it was just me, but at the same time, it's just me. And so I have to go to work and, you know, in all of that. So it just kept compiling every day was just, it never got better. It didn't matter how much you slept, it, you know, and I didn't, I didn't know what I didn't know back then. <laughs> that's how I always say, right. That's, um, that's probably the number one thing I, I believe that holds us, holds us all back is, you know, we're limited by what we know and limited by what we don't know. So, so chronic fatigue, chronic just not feeling right. Things were not not smooth with you at all. Uh, it's awful. What, what did you come to a particular point in your journey where you thought enough is enough, or what? How did you go about those unhappy times? I you I, I remember in part one you told me that you you tried to see the VA and uh, they ran tests from Adam to Eve, and yeah. uh, then told you uh, it's all in your head. 
Yes, and, I was in perfect health, but it, so it must all be in my in my head. It was in my head. May I just come to the the test that they have been running? What did my colleagues uh, throw at you? What kind of tests did you have? Um, I think you know your usual like liver enzymes and you know your your blood work and you know so checking your white blood cells, your red blood cells, and um, you know all of those. Uh, I guess nutritional um, mm -hmm. status quo, as they as they say. But you know, having learned a little bit more, I understand that some of those tests. Um, the thyroid, I think, back then was kind of becoming a big thing too. Um, so they they tested those, uh, you know, T three, T four levels and thyroid and and that kind of thing. So, which is good. That's really important because for you guys out there. I mean, this is not a side story here. That's an integral part of looking at someone who does not feel well from a mood perspective, because some medical uh, diseases can very much masquerade themselves as depression. So whenever mm -hmm. someone is being diagnosed with a depression, uh, good practices to run a series of blood tests to check for thyroid uh, low function, to check yeah. for um, immune problems, to check for nutritional problems, vitamin B12, these kind of things, liver dysfunctions, yeah. kidney dysfunctions, all that can make you feel really, really bad. And you think yeah. uh, it's in your head, it's something, you know, what a shrink needs to deal with. Uh, no, first of all, don't call them shrinks, but call them actually your power team that helps you to get get uh, get to the best possible yourself, number one. Number two is there might be a damn good reason why you feel yucky. So therefore, uh, I'm really pleased to hear that because they try to rule out biological reasons or the, sure. classical, the classic medical kind of things. Right. Okay. What they don't test for, of course, is they don't test for toxicity so they don't test for anthrax in your blood they don't test for you know jet fuel or you know any of those <laughs> compounds and chemicals that you uh, that we came across you know so that's not even in there but they're just checking to see you know does everything is everything running properly so in their in their logical mind they're thinking well then everything's running properly if all every all the numbers look good then Everything should be doing its job is where they come from, yeah. And that's really, really good that you highlight that. Because also, the what are norms? What are, when do we decide what is, quotation mark, normal in a blood test? And when does it become abnormal? Um, right. I had this discussion with a nutritionist, uh, Ben Warren, here in New Zealand. Um, and if you guys are interested in that, go back to around about episode 50, where I had him on my show. The fact is that, for example, that the, the inflammation markers, uh, the CRP, C-reactive protein, um, mm -hmm. has got a range of 0 to 8 or 0 to, to 11, something around that, which is considered normal. And then above 11, that's considered abnormal. Yeah. Now, I've been for a long time, I've been running 8, 9, which is normal. So I'm normal. There's nothing wrong. Now in reality is that there was shitloads of inflammation going on, but not to that degree that I'm now developing a autoimmune disorder that eats up my bones or eats up my joints or eats up my thyroid. Uh, then right. you've got levels of 200 or so. Now that's alarm bells, red alarm bells, go to the hospital right now because mm -hmm. you're about to have not such a nice outcome. So right. that is, abnormal in a medical sense, yet within that normal, the zero to 11, well, really, ideally, it should be zero to one-ish. That's sort of a nice, healthy immune system. I was running at eight, nine, means basically this low grade of ongoing inflammation uh, was not a very good thing for me to have. And right. it's that kind of a thing. So when you actually look at normality, quotation mark, um, that already is a challenge. The other thing yeah. I want to say is there is no test for jet fuel. Uh, jet fuel in its own right will have <laughs> I don't know how many compounds in it. And right, if you right. were if you were to do to speak to an environmental specialist and to see well what could you test for, I think that would be I don't know what 
hundred thousand US before you even start by the time you run everything you could possibly do? It's probably cost a million um, to test for absolutely everything that you can test for. So you can't just do that with everyone. So you need right. to have a, a very good, careful history, um, et cetera. And then if you know, great, you have been licking uh, lead paint every day for the last 40 <laughs> years because you were a painter. Uh, um, yeah. Okay, then maybe we should look for lead poisoning or things like that. So right. that, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. You, however, were in a situation where you were exposed to things that were actually a secret uh, within the military, uh, where even today, to nowadays standards, we don't even know what, what you were inoculated against and with. Um, who knows? So to actually say, wow, if they had just done the right tests, um, I don't think anyone could figure out which tests they should run in, in, in places right. like the Gulf War Syndrome quotation mark. Um, right. Or, or similar similar consequences of exposure yeah. to very weird chemical substances and circumstances. Yeah, and it's so, it's a, I mean, because people are so different and they themselves have grown up in different environmental factors as well and what they were exposed to, it's going to affect them in different ways. So it affected me through and presented as chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia. And that seems to be like, obviously one of the biggest uh, issues is an energy from a metabolism you know, standpoint, the energy that's the ATP that's being created or not being created and things are just not firing correctly. Um, <clears throat> that's the biggest complaint from people that have Gulf War syndrome, but there's so much more, you know, depending on what else they were exposed to. So. The TBI is a big thing, obviously. Um, the uh, restless, like the nervous system issues, are are pretty big because um, they're going to attack. It's going to attack your nervous system. So, for those of you who are not into the medical terminology and field, TBI, traumatic brain injury, and yeah. that can either be literally uh, a, a knock to the head, or it can be chronic through to substances. Um, they can cause their own trauma. And uh, so there is, that's the traumatic brain injury. Fibromyalgia, yeah, yeah. fibromyalgia is a disease or a, a symptom complex where basically absolutely everything bloody hurts. You're, and I mean that literally everything hurts. We, the diagnosis is being made by uh, examining you and pushing onto sets of diagnostic places, which are muscle groups typically, and you basically push there and the patient goes, ah! And then, okay, that's probably not normal because when I push there, luckily there is nothing. When you do that to a fibromyalgia patient, he will tell you where to go. Right. So there you go. So therefore, and if you score more than 11, 12 points and then have all the other things such as the typical foggy head, yet uh, the sleep problems at the same token, there, there are a number of other conditions and symptoms that go along with that, then a doctor will diagnose fibromyalgia with you. Yeah. And also important to say, fibromyalgia is something that affects women, typically more sort of in the middle ages. And it yeah. is uh, uh, yeah, women predominant, but men can get it too. And it might have bugger all to do with any kind of Gulf War syndrome or whatsoever. It is just a sign of a, of a chronic inflammation within the body that has been triggered by something. And often enough, people don't know why it is there and, and it just creeps up on people, but it, it creates havoc in, in their lives. So it's, it's not a nice thing to have. And it's very, very much affecting your quality of life no two ways around it yeah definitely but of course for the military it's easy they can say well hang on you're female okay it starts a bit early well it has nothing to do with us you're fibromyalgia right. it's just bugger off uh va no, no 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 you're not entitled because uh you know it is it's just it's not in your head i mean to actually say that okay maybe not the best bedside manner but uh it is yeah <laughs> um to to actually say no it has nothing to do with us 
they might be right. It could be very much that they are wrong too. Um, yes. But who knows? So to make a causal link there, very hard. Right. Well, exactly. Very difficult to do. Yeah. Because you figure most people, it's been 20, 25 years, almost 30 years. <laughs> I forget that, you know, it's been that long, but um, yeah. And so it's easy how much, you know, when do those people get out? What have they been exposed to since? And I'm quite sure, you know, um, the standard American diet does not help the situation in any way. Absolutely. Absolutely right. So no, there's, there, it's such a multifactorial thing, but great. <laughs> now, now you have figured out that you can't easily blame anyone or anything. There is not right. one single thing that you can say, ah, that's it. Yeah. Um, but you're still left with all the problems. You're still left with the foggy head. You're still left with the right. pain. And, yep. and great, where to go from here? Where right. did you go? What was yeah. your journey? Uh, I ended up in uh, Texas and I took a job with a, a company uh, that was out of Bangalore, India. And I decided I was always somewhat into natural health, not so much uh, nutrition at that time. Um, being from upstate New York, we were your, you know, kind of traditional meat and potatoes people, <laughs> German background, you know, a little bit of sauerkraut and... <laughs> If you're and lucky. sausage, if you're lucky. you'll be fine. Yeah, if you're lucky. And, it's, and if it's made properly, actually, but, you know, back then it was, but, you know, there's a special way to make sauerkraut that, you know, can't, can't <laughs> cheat on. <laughs> a, a quick, a quick uh, heads up. I actually bring uh, in a sauerkraut specialist. Um, I, I shouldn't call her like that. She, she is really a woman who is very much into fermented foods. So mm. that will be one of our future guests in November. Oh, good. So yes, awesome. exactly. So we're going to talk fermented foods far good more stuff, in detail. Yeah. Look forward to it, guys. But back to you, Absolutely. back to you. <laughs> so here you are. You're, you're already out here. Yeah. The Ayurveda just just yes, so in the background. So. <laughs> so Ayurveda, of course, is uh, the oldest medicinal practice uh, in the world, uh, documented, I guess I should say, and so um, based out of uh, India. And it is basically, you know, these herbs that they uh, blend synergistically that support different uh, functions of the body. And so this company... Uh, at the time was called Ayurvedic Concepts. Um, the owner came over to Houston, came to, uh, he didn't himself, but he set up his business in Houston around the Rice District, which is a very well-known medical, medical district. And he set up about 12 retail stores mm -hmm. and brought all his products with him from India and, and the Himalayas. And, um, and so I got a position with that company based on the results that I had from their product. So uh, my best friend uh, and business partner had, uh, she had gotten on because she had a nursing background and she didn't want to sell pharmaceuticals she, and she was very much about natural. So she got on, she learned everything she could possibly learn and, you know, pass that information along to me as, you know, <laughs> and so I was learning, but I was also the guinea pig and I was taking all the products and at, at whatever rate and very, very quickly, I felt a whole lot better. Like within a couple of weeks, like about three weeks or so, two to three weeks, um, I started feeling a lot better. I started getting some energy back, sleeping better, restless legs started going away. And I just kept going, obviously. And, um, you know, and going through their different products and every product I use gave me another layer of healing which was wonderful. And so, um, as I said, it took roughly 60 to 90 days to uh, feel what I would say was back to normal for a, I think I was around 30 at the time, 20, 20 29, 30, something, somewhere around there. And so <clears throat> having the energy that I felt like I should have and feeling like, you know, I could go hiking, I could go biking, I could do all the things that I wanted to do mm. again mm. and not be like <sighs> exhausted and have to go take a nap in the car <laughs> when I got done. So it was great. It was great. And I, you know, from there, um, you know, worked for that company for a while and uh, eventually 
moved on as the supplement industry grew. Of course, our end, our our curiosity grew, and so we kept like you know looking and snooping and learning and you know doing all these things, <laughs> snooping whatever we could find, whatever we could get our hands on to learn about you know these products that were coming out and and what they you know how they react in the body, how you responded, and and so we really it was a lot of trial you know for ourselves, and then we had people um, that came to us from people that were from the store and they would meet, have other people that had chronic illness. And they, I mean, the healings that came from the people that were in the store were phenomenal. It was just literally miraculous. And so, um, and that's kind of how it went. And we just kept getting referral, referral, referral. So this was an offline kind of side hustle health coaching that we did for, for 20 years and people with all different chronic diseases from, you know, limes to things new that come up the metabolic syndrome and of course at the time those things weren't termed there was no terminology for them there was no um uh, what's the word i'm looking for um diagnosis there was no medical diagnosis for chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia when i had them and then of course um metabolic syndrome and and all those autoimmune diseases so people with lupus and and everything and so it was um it was just kind of a you know a self-study and we learned a lot i mean 20 years you do <laughs> right that's, that's not where the whole story ended is it <laughs> no it's it's not because there was not just the physical aspect um there was also for me uh, a certain amount of ptsd that had come from uh that had come from the military i wasn't really experiencing it for a while when you're outside of something that triggers you. But when you get to something or someone or some situation that brings back these memories, and sometimes it just comes back up, you know, out of, out of your cells, out of the record of your cells. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how I look at it. Like um, this was imprinted within our cells through the memory of water, right. And the, and the hormones of stress, and cortisol and aldosterone and adrenaline and, and all of those things. So those recordings, everything is getting recorded in your cellular memory, right? They say, there's, oh, there's muscle memory. Well, the muscles have the memory because the, there's water in every bit of us and the water is what carries the memory, right? So the interesting thing about water is you can't, um, you can't erase information from water. So you can... If you're taking water and you put it through, you know, 10 charcoal filters, UV light, reverse osmosis, everything and anything you can do, that's great. You can remove the dissolved solids, you can remove the bacteria, but you can't remove the information, which was really interesting. What you can do with it is you can nullify it. And this is, uh, this is what energy medicine kind of does. And so um, with PTSD, I didn't know how I was going to, you can't do anything. You can't take a pill to get rid of PTSD. You just can't, you know, it's, it's there. And so, and I understand now, you know, with the imprinting, why it's there. So you go, well, how do you, how do you deal with it? Because that's the most you can do with PTSD really is manage it. Right. And it's this emotional um, component of um, obviously of the trauma of the event and that kind of thing. And so when it comes back, it's literally like, because your brain doesn't understand the difference between perceived threat and actual threat. And when you get that trigger that puts you right back on a hormonal level, puts you right back in the same situation that you were in, that's where everything, you know, when the pictures come back and the memories come back and, and everything is affecting your body the same way because your body only knows how to react and respond to stress in one way, whatever it is, if it's physical, mental, emotional, um, it only knows the fight or flight mechanism. That's all it knows. So the energy medicine, um, I became a Reiki master and the energy medicine was what helped deal with that to a certain degree um 
it helped to remove the, doesn't remove the memory, but it helps to displace the emotion per se. And so as I, as I would deal with it and I started, it's that once you recognize it, once you see it and it's looking back at you, it loses its power. And so when you face it, um, if you let the fear overtake you, then you're letting the fear overtake you, right? But if you stand up to that fear and recognize that it doesn't have that power over you because you have to be in a conscious awareness of where you are and what's going on in your, your surroundings, that you are safe and you know nothing is going on. Um, that is a challenge for many people. So the, the, Reiki and the, the Reiki energy really helped me get through that. And even up till this year, that was a regular form of post-traumatic stress. Um, there is also a form of complex post-traumatic stress disorder that can arise out of different situations. And, and it really is a, it is a little bit different. It is a little bit complex. And I experienced that most recently um, through a, a very traumatic experience of parental alienation and legal abuse syndrome through um, the United States. And, um, and that took a period of about five years. But when I came across this um, quantum bioresonance, what took me 20 years to work through with a regular post-traumatic stress only took maybe six months to get through with the quantum bioresonance. Because what it has done is it takes um, an agreement of your subconscious mind and your conscious mind to come together and say, we don't have the capacity to, we don't have the capacity to heal ourselves in this manner. But the superconscious can do it because the superconscious knows everything. It knows every part of your body. It's the original DNA blueprint before any trauma, before any garbage in your entire life. So the superconscious, when you come into agreement and you give it permission to remove the things that no longer serve you, that are holding you back, it does that um, in a very gentle, um, kind of nurturing way. And in an effortless way. And so when you actually, when those memories come back up or the emotions come back up, it's easier to disassociate from them. It's like you see it more clearly. And so you're able to much easier look at it for what it is. And again, the same thing happens. Once you see it, you release it and it's gone. Like it's not coming back. So deeper layers come up. And you're dealing with different things on different levels from, you know, each energy center. I'm not sure how familiar with your, you know, energy centers your your viewers are. But, you know, we have energy centers that run through the center of our body up and down the spine from the crown chakra to the root chakra, which it mm-hmm. connect yeah, us. Introduce, come on, intro, introduce us to it. Um, okay. That- yeah, so that connect us uh, on our energy, our, our energy body to the universal energy, the vortex where we get our our spark from, our life from is that that universal energy. So I'm pretty sure I know that I didn't create myself. It wasn't a thought in my own head. <laughs> so, um, and this is you know part of my beliefs obviously, and people are entitled to believe what they want. Um, but this is the, this is the belief that has helped me to transform those traumatic, um, memories and energies to something useful in recognizing it uh, for myself so that I'm able to move forward in what I, you know, came here to do and came here to be and people that I came to affect and Um, and have an impact on, you know, so it's been really, really, um, it's been really phenomenal uh, in in doing that and and moving it so much faster. It's wonderful. 
And I think that's that's the key thing. So something has helped you make sense of your suffering and more importantly, improve your suffering. And yeah. you have highlighted already the impact of nutrition, the impact of those little micro habits that has helped your body to get on a more even keel. So that is certainly one thing, but there are things between heaven and earth that we cannot explain. There are, yeah. there are issues with frequencies, when I say issues, there are, there are frequencies out there that are incredibly powerful. Yes. Think of it, your microwave. Well, that's a frequency yeah. that you had no idea that's even there, but yet the energy, thank you very much, is heating up your right. food. Okay? Right. So there's one thing. Take, take the Wi-Fi. You're walking yes. through it, you have no idea, but somehow the film streams in your computer. Right. Well, that's energy. That's energy fields. That's that's waves. That's all yes. that is happening. So, yes, we can see it. But and that's perfect. I'm so glad that you brought up frequency because that's what bioresonance is. Exactly. And it is the key to the law of attraction. A lot of people go, man, that law of attraction, it's not working for me, right? Well, <laughs> why not? It's because I've got my mindset. You know, I'm doing all the things, and I'm writing my affirmations, and I'm and I'm making my intentions pure and clean and whole and is it wrong to, you know, to want to have this and to want to have that? Mm. No, it's not wrong. And it's it's fine that you want that. However, the fact that you want something, we're transmitters. So you're transmitting mm. already. Your identity is transmitting that you have a lack mentality mm. because you don't have something that you want. So you're not content with what you have. You just want this. You just want that. You just want so you have to be content with what you want and you have to know what you really want, <laughs> right? <laughs> so want what you have, right? And, and then you can have what you want. Um, but also it's the, the frequency is, is huge. And I call it the secret to the secret um, because they do, you know, they talk about energy and they talk about vibration and they go, yeah, and frequency. Well, what is frequency? What is that, right? So it's it's frequency, it's the resonance, and and what is that? It's the it's almost like the intention, right? But it would be like the seed of the energy in a sense, right? So what's the the inception of that energy? Where does it come from? So I look at those things in uh, in retrospect to the person. So everything that happened, there's certain energies that uh, negative energies that will set up in people so like the um you have your, your fears of success and you have your fears of failure you have your um not worthy not good enough not you know not smart enough um and all of those different energies are locked up inside those energy centers in different areas and so um getting to the root of what those are is is what quantum bioresonance is and it's an inner alchemy of that energy to release it because it's holding you back from doing the things that you need to do or being as successful as you need to be or want to be or whatever it is there's nothing wrong with wanting to be successful but there's certain things in that law of attraction that you need to do first and then you will start and then learn the eighth principle and it'll all start coming through and it's of course, it's of course hard because the language that you use, you're combining physical principles that you can measure with clever methods with more abstract philosophical uh, principles. And that link uh, that is where some people, that's where some people will probably rather say, nah, that is, that is, she has lost it there. Uh, I think the, the reality is, let's go back to the physical principles. What is a frequency? A frequency is that the sine wave, that is yes. this kind of up and down thing of mm -hmm. a uh, of a wave. Um, yep. It's a how many times per second does it go up and down? 
So mm -hmm. the 50 hertz, I mean, that's your, that's your, the, the AC, DC, that's the, so air, that's a the radio frequency. Mm -hmm. That's right. So frequency is basically the hertz uh, on a megahertz, yes. et cetera. The hertz, absolutely. Um, so if you were to have a radio, uh, a CB uh, radio or a police radio, et cetera, well, the police radio, you have got all kinds of frequencies there. And if you look, listen for each and one of them, uh, there's nothing, there is static, there's white noise, there's white yeah. noise, and then suddenly yeah. there's hello, hello, yes, there are some voices coming through. And it just so happens to be that you're exactly on the right frequency from your receiver to the broadcaster, which in this case is the police radio, or if you're in the bush, um, a CB radio that, that uh, with another hunter, etc. So yeah. that is frequencies. We'll accept yeah. that absolutely as, yeah, logic. That's how it works. You know, key, lock and key kind of a thing. Well, what is to say that there are not other frequencies out there that some of us are more attuned to than others and some of frequencies that people can send, literally send, as in uh, a healing power, so to speak, um, that they can sense abnormal energy fields within you, that they can sense that there is a problem around your right knee um, with regards to energy flow, and that that might actually contribute to some pain that you're suffering from. And who's yeah. to say that, that some healers cannot actually uh, kick that energy into shape and actually make it flow again in a way that makes you feel better and uh, it sounds bizarre to someone who has never experienced that um, uh, yes as a doctor 10 years ago I would have thought yeah right and <laughs> meanwhile I have come in touch with healers myself and I have felt changes within my body that I thought no way in hell no way in hell the guy didn't even touch me and right. suddenly something woof like a wave came through me that i could not explain whatsoever and yeah. i thought come on bullshit and yeah. but yeah so bottom line is uh, if you just for a moment were to actually accept the concept that there are frequencies in this life and you're already using them all yourself from radio to whatever. Um, mm -hmm. So, and if you accept also that these frequencies would affect your body, then actually that makes sense. May I, may I raise the issue of music? There is certain music with certain frequencies that you can use to calm yourself down or to ref yourself up. So, yeah. you know, that's why you choose certain music. There right. are certain music out there that will make me cry. End of the story. There's certain yeah. music out there where I suddenly have the adrenaline surging through me. And that's what I put on when I want to be in the gym and want to wanna, wanna work out. So right. you're using frequencies there to change your state of mind. Yes. Classic example there. So... Okay, so if you accepted a microwave, if you accepted the television, you've accepted Wi-Fi, but somehow you're not accepting that there might be other frequencies that might actually be of, of interest to us just because we don't know about them yet. Right. Hmm. Hmm. So you got into that uh, that that minefield. I call it a minefield because there are I so call many. That too. <laughs> <laughs> there's do. so many people out yeah. there who say oh what a bullshit and there are other people out there typically those that have been on the receiving end or those that have figured out that they actually have got that in alignment uh, or being aligned with the universe and being able to to deal with energy literally yeah. Um, yeah. they uh they certainly say no that's not bullshit so how did your journey along these lines come in you didn't just say, oh, I want to move you, move. That right. probably didn't happen. Um, so what was your journey there? Um, as I said, initially, it was originally for myself, for my post-traumatic stress, when I realized what that Reiki was able to do. And then um, 
my BFF, and I call her research and development. She is the D of R and D. Um, she's always like having me listen to different, you know, different stuff, different stuff, different stuff. Uh, listen to a lot of Dr. Joe Dispenza, a lot of um, Greg Braden, and Dr. Joe Lipton. I'm, I'm sorry, Dr. Bruce Lipton, mm-hmm. and. Uh, you know, just little snippets in the morning. So the, all those things that we're doing on the outside for the mindset, mm-hmm. we have to have the mindset, right? Because if your mind is constantly like, that's not happening for you, this and the negative, you're projecting what you want to, what you're drawing to you, right? So as a transceiver receiver, you're projecting the negative, you're going to bring the negative to you. Stop doing that, <laughs> right? So we would do, you know, Every morning, you know, we have a routine of listening to um, different encouraging people, different, you know, entrepreneurs or people that are running business, those kind of things. And then we also will listen to, um, you know, either Dispenza or Braden or Lipton or something. So so Lipton came on, you know, one morning and I was listening to his, what it was that he was saying for that day and brought me to a website who introduced me to a woman and who was one of his groupies back in, you know, when he was really getting into, he was the one who wrote the biology of belief. Mm -hmm. And so she had followed him around, went to every, you know, and she started um, working with this, this inner resonance and this alchemy. And, and I, I really wasn't looking for something else. It found me. And that's same was with Reiki. It finds you really. Um, And so it's, you know, it's the universe nudging you to go level up, level up, level up <laughs> because you need to be where you need to be and not be focused on this. Yes, I understand, you know, this broke your heart and this, you know, it's hard to move out of that space, you know, because it hurts, you know, and there's only certain ways that, you know, you know how to deal with it. And for me it was and a lot of people it's always switch to the masculine energy, which is hustle and grind. (laughs) It's, you know, work yourself to pieces so you don't have to think about what's going on. Right. And I think, you know, people that have had, that have some kind of addiction, whether it's alcohol or drugs, or that is an addiction. There is an addiction to that in the sense of, because you're ignoring, you know, dealing with that pain. You just don't want to deal with it. So it's easier to focus on, on work and, you know, taking your mind off, off that. And so it found me and I'm very grateful that it did. And it helped me to work through um, and stay focused and let go of the stuff that was holding me back. Cause when I decided that we needed to take our knowledge and move it online, this was before COVID uh, last December, actually, and we're going to figure out a way, you know, put it together to create, you know, group programs so people could get the knowledge, get the information that they needed um, if they wanted to, um, you know, if they're one of those achieving people that want to have, you know, their body performing the way it's supposed to perform. So not just eating, you know, uh, living to eat, but eating to live and, and that kind of, you know, using it as the tool that it is to accomplish things in your life. So, um, so that's what we've been working on pretty much most of the year, putting those, those packages together. And of course, when, uh, bioresonance came to me, it is a huge key because I realized that I could give you my blueprint you know, the, the body blueprint, I can give that to you. You can eat all the right foods. You can take all the right supplements. You can take all the right detox and you will feel better. There's no doubt about that because you're honoring your body, but your mindset, then you have the mindset. People go, make sure you're doing your affirmations, writing your affirmations and setting your intentions and doing this. And it's all these outward things and all those outward things are great meditations and all those things they're wonderful and i do them myself however it can't you can't change the energy that way they tell you if you want to retrain the subconscious mind the only way you can do it is through repetition or hypnosis well i know a lot of people that are not crazy about hypnosis myself including and repetition is well 
really repetitive, <laughs> you know? And so it's, it's fine. You know, it's still good to do those things, but, um, the bioresonance is so easy. It's so effortless. It literally is a, just a very simple live active meditation, um, where you're just, you know, going back and forth together and making, um, different contracts, um, and setting up different, um, setting up what you want your future to look like, which means you have to let go of some of those, you know, negative thoughts, limited beliefs. You've got to get let go of the, I'm not worthy. I'm not smart enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not popular enough. I'm, you know, all of those things, because all of those things are keeping you from your next level. So how does that work, these little contracts? How does that work in, in reality? Do you need to spell it out as a person? You need to speak it, yeah. Teach us absolutely. a little bit away. Yeah, Teach us, absolutely. give us a bit of an insight there. Yeah, absolutely. You need to speak it because the, your words are really powerful. So uh, we understand everything is energy and that's why, you know, the mindset is powerful. I believe your wellness is a hundred percent mental, right? I mean, it's when there's a baby forming in the womb, it's the first thing that's forming, right? Is, is the head and the subconscious mind starts around six months and it starts recording all everything around it. And it starts soaking it up like a sponge and, and recording. And even back to that, um, that development, it records things. So if there was, you know, any children, babies that were uh, neglected or um, had to go to NICU, you know, without their mom or, you know, that bond between the mother and the baby. And you can find those all over YouTube, those mm -hmm. those um, documentaries and, and that kind of thing. There are spirits of abandonment that set up. Um, that many people have, they don't even know it's there because it, it formed during the subconscious um, programming. And so it kind of sets up there. And that's a whole nother um, kind of aspect, spiritual aspect of it, but it's there. And because it's there, it's part of the resonance. And so it has to be dealt with. You have to figure out where did that come from? And if you don't know about it, and that's what the super conscious was, would do. It knows those things. So for me, me, like I had a narcissistic mother and a narcissistic father. I came to realize that um, at a very young age, I knew that my mother really didn't want me, to be honest. And, but it was like, back then, I was like, okay, well, fine. I don't want you either. <laughs> you know, I was kind of that, that, that kid. But I see now that that came back up, that came back around to me. Um, you know, in 40 years later to, to see that. And that spirit of abandonment had come up because she was neglectful in the sense that some of my earliest memories, I'd never remember seeing her anywhere. I remember getting out of cribs to go to the kitchen and get food at like <laughs> two and a half, three years old, you know, so you're like, oh, that's crazy. I'm like, yeah, it is. But I don't remember, I don't remember either of my parents being around. So I realized that that spirit came back. Um, so it, it comes back in very, um, in these ways, but you don't understand it. And so the inner alchemy really brings that to light. It shows you. And so it's these contracts, um, where you're having with, you know, as I said, in a, in a conscious live active state and you're telling all the I say personalities of you, although we're not schizophrenic, but all the, the pieces and the parts of you um, that need to know, we're giving them an upgrade. So it's not a healing because you're not broken. <laughs> you just need an upgrade in your thinking, right? That stinking thinking. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that. Um, I mean, and again, how would you upgrade? You would use Wi-Fi, you would use frequencies, you would use all those kind of things. So you take it for granted that Microsoft right. sends you a regular update. Yet right. here, when something actually comes through in real life, update here, where it's really, that is what matters. We sort of say, no, 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 no. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a bit of a funny one, isn't it? 
That's right. right. Yeah. Mm, uh, so I agree with you. I agree. For yeah. me, it's it's hard as a doctor uh, who likes to touch things, examine things, see things, know right. the relationship. I can touch it here. If I poke there, that leg goes <laughs> up there. Oh, I like that. So yeah. that's cool. Frequencies I can't touch. Right. Therefore, me and many other of my colleagues uh, will inevitably be skeptics uh, with regards to that, isn't it? And it's just... Yeah. Uh, well, you can actually, I, I think it was Lipton that it was either Lipton or Braden. I'm not sure which one, but I'm sure all three of them are very familiar with it. But there was testing that they did uh, with certain cells where they would excite. It's like 10 miles down the road. So they would excite one and see, well, what's what's happening here? So it's really interesting if you get into, you know, if you look into some of their work. So all of what I'm saying is not me just saying it and and hypothesizing out there this is all stuff that has been backed up by science yeah. Yeah. and um it just confirms you know what i've seen and what i've experienced for myself mm. so um so yeah and it works and like you said if you've you've dealt with some of this energy healing you understand like something did happen here something like mm. something happened but you feel like like it's in your spirit not necessarily in your body but it it has an effect on your body. Mm -hmm. It has very much yeah. has an effect on your body. So you're making contracts with your super conscious about um, bringing things into alignment so that you can do the work that you're here to do. And I think that's, that's what it boils down to. If you can create a better you that is suddenly more centered and more, uh, more equilibrated uh, for lack of a better word, um, who is allowing you to achieve goals that previously you were unable to do. Mm -hmm. What is necessarily so wrong with that? If you haven't made a pact with Satan, you haven't sold your firstborn, you <laughs> have not done anything like that, you're just actually saying, okay, just for argument's sake, we'll accept that frequencies and and these kind of things are there. <laughs> nice play on words, Stefan, well done. Mm -hmm. But here you are, you tune into someone, isn't it? There's already your, even your own language without you knowing it is using yeah. frequency terminology. So yeah. it is, I'm sure there are many more examples out there where actually we are accepting frequencies as part of our life. So why not? use frequencies and allow them to alter you in a better way. We know that certainly uh, the military is using frequencies and trying to disrupt uh, the enemy. Uh, on the battlefield, there were recently suspicions that uh, frequencies were used to make diplomats sick in various countries around the world uh, where suddenly functional uh, diseases or, or headaches, etc. It was basically that uh, the diplomats really were struggling and that happened in two yeah. places. So there is, we know that the, the dark forces in this life, uh, i.e. military, etc., will use the same things to a negative uh, extent. Why right. not use it to a positive? One or two yeah. it to something where we can actually improve ourselves by setting ourselves up with our own ideal balance of frequencies, uh, the ideal energy flow, so that we are centered, that our hormone systems are down regulated to a level where they are healthy, and use that as part of your armamentarium. Don't just say, oh, I stop, take all medicines now, anything, regardless from blood pressure to mood, uh, because I will now do frequencies. Yeah, right. <laughs> come on, don't be stupid. Don't be stupid. But why not use healthy nutrition, rehydration, attention to sleep, plus work with a frequency healer or uh, work with, with uh, techniques, such as certain meditations that allow you to align yourself with the frequencies. 
certainly if you take that as part of a overall healing system, would that not make sense suddenly? And I think if we come from that angle as uh, especially us from the Western world who are so not used to the kind of energy flows and things like that, um, would that not make sense to actually accept that? And for that matter, I mean, some of you out there, some of the listeners who might be very skeptical now about what we've been talking about, well, did you ever have acupuncture? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. helped me really well with my knee and with this and with that. Well, guess what acupuncture does? It changes energy flows in your system. The right. meridians, which are basically, <clears throat> they're like, like, call them like vessels, like like blood vessels that they send blood through the body. Well, meridians are vessels that send energy for the body. And that's exactly where the 365 uh, uh, energy points um, on the acupuncture points are coming from. And yes, of course, it's a bit funny that there are 365 days in a year and 365 points. <laughs> so I give you all that. But bottom line is, there is something there. Too many people out there have had acupuncture to a great, great uh, effect. Yeah, you're manipulating energy. So again, think about it, guys. Think about it. Don't, don't close that door before you actually have explored it if it could not actually really, really help you. So if people want to learn a little bit more about uh, energy flows and especially the work that you are doing, Shannon, uh, tell us a little bit more about that. How can they get hold of you? Well, I, of course, have uh, I have a website. I have uh, my YouTube page. I have a website. Um, and I am going to be actually doing some, uh, I'm going to do a little five-day workshop cool. uh, coming up on a fairly regular basis, I would say, to kind of give people a a taste of what that's like. So it's funny, you had talked about, um, you know, this, it, I, I call it like a reinvention remix, so to speak. So it's, <laughs> it's, um, it's resonance and it's empowerment and it's your mindset and it's inner alchemy and then it's expression and expansion. And so it's going to cover a little bit. And of course have, um, it covers a little bit of the physical aspect, but also a little bit of the, um, bio resonance and it's really taking account of starting with who you are because in order to change your paradigm and where you want to move to you've really got to know who you are and where you know where you've come from right and so taking an account and an inventory of those things and you'll probably get a majority of you know some of the things you know that you need to work on you know that will come right up um but then as you get deeper into the layers, you're like, wow, I didn't know that was an issue. <laughs> That's kind of a surprise. But, you know, just sort of a, a taste test to to show you how very uh, effortless it is, easy and uh, what's the word I want to use Un unobstructive. Cause when we talk about a lot of people that do trauma work, there's um, talk therapy, which I I believe in to a certain extent of getting it off of your chest, so to speak. But once you go to a certain point of actually creating deeper pathways, when you are constantly talking about it. And so you're, you're ingraining that trauma a little bit deeper every time you talk about it. So then, um, you know, as I said, the second form is, you know, there's no hypnosis, there's, it's, it, there's no medications, and there's no trauma recall, other than to say, you know, this is probably something that I need to, you know, I need to work with. You don't have to bring up the nitty gritty details, you don't have to walk through anything, it's just to say, and even if you don't know, like that spirit of abandonment that I talked about, if you don't know that's there, as I said, your super conscious knows that it's there. And it will get to the, the root of that issue as well. And it will come up and it might be something that you recognize, but you're able at that point, you're really ready. You can just look at it and let it go. So that will be coming up. Um, and, you know, my website is the, uh, it's a, the secret to the secret dot now dot site. And, um, 
And so that's part of that, the actual big program. But as I said, I'll be coming out with a five-day workshop uh, probably next month in December and, and on a monthly basis to kind of give people a taste of it. Oh, fantastic. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Um, so we're going to put the links to all those uh, adventures uh, into the description of this YouTube video as well as the podcast. So guys, just have a look down there, click on it uh, if you wanted to find more out about Shannon and the work she is doing. Shannon, I'm very grateful that you spent so much time with me, uh, two episodes of this, this beautiful uh, broadcast here, and, and I have learned a lot, and it is, it's, uh, it's a beautiful journey for me because I'm opening myself up to new opportunities and new insights, and I never stop learning. And it is a wonderful, wonderful feeling to expand my mind with the knowledge that you have just imparted today. So I'm very grateful uh, because I hope that just as much as I have learned a lot, uh, others out there will hopefully have learned a lot, but also have, have shaken off the misbelief that, oh, it's all in your head. It's all funky witchcraft. Yeah. weird <laughs> shit that uh, that they better stay miles away from um don't think so don't think right. so but right. we can't yeah. touch it we can't we can't easily easily work it out therefore skeptics will be skeptics but i hope uh, that that some people uh who truly need need centering and you who need uh the input can find it somewhere out there because there are an astounding amount of healers out there. They don't come with a magic wand and they don't wear ropes or something like that. Um, then, and if they do, then you run, please. Then I right. think, then, unless it's Halloween, they could come in both ways, but no, 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 no. Okay, guys, so it is what it is. Typically the healers that I've met, I never knew that they were healers until well down the line. Um, so here you go. This is, yeah. yeah, it is what it is. Shannon, I'm so grateful that you came onto my show. I'm very grateful for your honesty and your, your transparency. It's not, not easy to bear your soul to about a million people uh, who will soon be our followers here. Right. So, so subscribe to that bloody button down there so that we get our numbers up. <laughs> a million is maybe pushing it but you know it's just let's spread the message let's let's we let's... can get there together <laughs> oh yes well that's the law of attraction there you go that's right <laughs> oh go. brilliant shannon thank you so much and you guys out there look after yourself make the most of this beautiful day and find ways how you can create that vision turn that vision into a mission and become that person that you want to be because you deserve it. You, the past does not equal the future. Go out there, live your life to the fullest. Look after yourself, guys. Bye.